Hi, it's Emma here. Uh, in this quick snippet, I'm going to go briefly through one of my recent blog posts, uh, Kitchen Design Tips. So this is part one. Let's get started. Um, in part one, we're going to look at the questions you need to ask your client or the information you need to extract from the brief, um, what to look for if you're working in an existing space, um, planning out your space, uh, different layout options, and finally we're going to look at a few quick tips. Um, so first of all, questions for the client. Um, you need to figure out whether the kitchen is going to be used as a food preparation or more of a living and eating space. Um, will the client be doing much entertaining in the space? This will have an impact on how you plan furniture and arrangements. Um, is the client a keen cook? Uh, do they need a lot of preparation space? Will they need a lot of appliances um, or are they just going to want a microwave on a worktop? Um, in order to microwave all their meals. Um, will they be looking for a lot of space for ingredients and storage, maybe a separate larder area or like a pull-out unit or something like that? Um, how many people cook? Is it just one person in the household that cooks or do they prefer to have family cooking time with the kids and everything um, as this will have an impact on the kind of your space requirements and space planning? Um, some more questions you may have for the client could include uh, the footfall. Does the kitchen lead to another space? Um, will there be lots of people passing through? Again, this will have an impact on how you plan the space. Um, does the client use a lot of appliances? So, for example, do they have lots of coffee machines and pasta machines, um, blenders, things like that? Will there be a lot of space required on the worktops for these appliances? Um, and likewise, what sort of fitted appliances are they going to be wanting in the kitchen? Dishwashers, washing machines, fridge freezers, etc. etc. On the note of movable um, appliances, will they need a lot of storage space um, for some of these things? And, and do they generally want a lot of storage space included within the kitchen? Um, another thing that is important, of course, is the budget. If you're working within an existing space, so it's not a new build, but you're perhaps um, doing an upgrade to an existing kitchen or renovations, um, some of the things you need to look at would be the um, current size of the of the room, um, what the dimensions are that you have to work with. Um, are there sort of existing storage and utility spaces elsewhere in the building, or will those kind of things be, have to be incorporated into your kitchen design? Where are the existing plumbing located? This would possibly have a sway on where you position um, things like your dishwasher, your sink, etc, etc. Um, likewise, where are the electrical points? Um, how will the existing doors impact on the space? Will they have any, cause any restrictions within your kitchen design or will they need to be moved or amended? Um, and any existing windows and the heights of those windows, particularly sill heights, um, if you're looking to fit worktops underneath the window, is the window high enough in order to allow the worktop to um, be positioned underneath? Um, next, we're going to look at planning the space. Um, so, one of the main keys to a well structured kitchen is to plan the location of important appliances and the spaces to make sure that frequent tasks can be completed easily um, and pretty efficiently. So, for example, if you're going to make a coffee, you need um, to have easy access to the cupboard to get the coffee cups. You want to fill the kettle with water um, and get the milk out of the fridge. So, you know, the, the, these items need to be within a fairly good distance of one another in order for the task to be carried out easily. Um, so this is often referred to as the uh, work triangle. Um, and this is where you have the fridge, the cooker and the sink um, within a triangle um, in between about five and seven meters in total from one another. Um, and what this does is this basically is considered to be um, an effective use of the space. So with that in mind, let's have a look at um, some layouts. Um, the first layout we're gonna talk about briefly is the galley um, layout. And this is option of, often when you don't really have any other choice. Um, you have a narrow kitchen, units on one side or both sides. Um, you need to ensure that there's at least 1.2 metres of space um, down the middle or down the side in order for you to be able to open the cupboards comfortably. Um, sometimes what you can do, if you can't fit a row of units each side, you could go for the narrower wall units on one side just to allow for the additional storage. Um, another option is your U-shape. Um, the U-shape is often good for um, 
adding your work triangle because it's sort of position it just lends itself to that kind of arrangement so that can work really well um, likewise the l-shaped kitchen um, can be good for the work triangle um, you can position your sink down uh, halfway down one side of the l shape and the cooker halfway down the other um, and then for larger kitchens you've also got the island option which can improve the working triangle when you've got units perhaps down all, all down one side of a large wall um, if you have the island you just cr can create additional maybe seating, additional storage, maybe space for appliances or just allow for a much larger preparation area. Um, it's always recommended that you have about one metre around, around your island as a minimum. Um, so just a couple of quick tips. Um, when it comes to appliances, uh, it's best not to position your fridge next to the cooker or the oven because it can impact on efficiency. Likewise, be careful if you're going to position a fridge next to a wall um, as to which way the door is going to swing because it can limit how your door swings and make for uncomfortable usage. Um, the worktop space between the hob and the sink um, is also best to provide as much space as possible. On to lighting. Um, this is often something that's overlooked, um, so make sure you just give it a bit of consideration. Spotlights are generally good, providing really good light for when you're um, preparing food, etc. But also under unit wall lights are, are good, um, providing a additional light for when you're doing preparations. However, if the kitchen is going to be used for eating space as well, you may want to have an option of down lighters, um, so you don't have the really bright spotlights when you're eating a meal. Um, and finally. Storage, don't forget about the storage. Um, it's so important, it can often be overlooked and it's so frustrating when there's just nowhere to put anything. Um, so make sure you really do pay some extra thought to the storage options and maybe think of some you know, innovative and unusual ideas how to get the best out of the space that you're, that you're working in. So thank you very much for watching. This is really quick. If you want to read the full blog post, um, you want to go over to firstinarchitecture.co.uk um, once you're on the site, you can use that tiny little search box up in the top right hand corner um, and search for kitchen design tips and you'll find the post. Alternatively, just click on the link in the notes below this video. Um, keep a lookout, I'll be publishing the second video um, to this series sometime soon. Thanks for watching.